Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, this is the second part or the last part of worksheet number six. If you didn't watch the first part of this worksheet, please pause this video right now and watch that at first and then come to watch this part. You can download this book free. The link is given in the description box. In the first part of this worksheet, I discussed five linguistic and structural devices of the text. Today, I will discuss five more points of the text. So, you can see some colored lines over here. Actually, I marked this line before so that it may save our time and make the video shorter. At first, look at the light blue colored lines. I shall serve the roast turkey on dustbin lids, all washed down with fine wine sucked from a uli sock, and bread with a side order of dandruff could be an appetite killer. So these are the references you can see. So what's the point? In these lines, uh, we can see that the writer uh, uses hyperbole and vivid imagery to convey not only her disbelief, but also for uh, comic effect. So that's the point number six. Now, point number seven. For point number seven, uh, look at the green colored lines here. Um, instead of using boring old plates in the next page, as far as I'm concerned, a lot of the blame lies with Jamie Oliver. And here, overseas, it's even worse. Uh, there is an Asian restaurant in New York where, where guests eat out of the toilet bowls. So from these green colored lines, we can say uh, that emphatic but uh, tongue-in-cheek humor is used throughout to entertain the reader. Uh, here, Tongue in cheek means uh, that is done or said as a joke. Okay, not seriously. So in the green colored lines, the writer is saying something which is not so serious, just uh, as a joke. Okay, so we see that this type of humor is used throughout the text to entertain the reader. Okay, so this is the point number seven. So. Uh, for point number eight, we have to look at the red colored lines here. Uh, this will be followed by plum pudding presented in a baseball glove. Alliteration. Can you see? Plum pudding presented alliteration. P, P, P. So, uh, the writer has used alliteration uh, for humorous effect. I hope you know what alliteration is. Alliteration means the use of same letter or sound at the beginning of the words uh, that are close together. Um, like, uh, bitty bought butter, but the butter was bitter, so bitty bought better butter to make the bitter butter better. Like this. Okay, that's the point number eight. So, point number six, seven, and eight all are about linguistic devices. Okay, now we would like to make some points on structural devices. Uh, so point number nine, look at the title of the text, uh, chips in the flower pots, bread in a flat cap, uh, why don't restaurants use plates anymore? So here we can see, so the heading is structured to highlight the issue and convey a sense of the writer's scorn. Scorn uh, means S-C-O-R-N, scorn. Uh, which means a strong feeling that is uh, that uh, something or somebody is stupid or not good. Two examples uh, are delivered in the short sentences, uh, chips in the flower pots and bread in a flat cap. And these are followed by a plea in the form of a question. Okay, why don't restaurants use plates anymore? This is the question. So now, the last point of today's video, uh, point number 10. You can see somewhat orange colored lines here. Not anymore. I have it in a stick of a roof tile, chicken of a brick, like this, dot, 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 dot. 
up to a dog bowl. And another example is overseas, it's even worse. So in these three sentences, you can hear the exclamatory sign at the end of the sentences. Here, one, two, and three. So now we can say uh, exclamatory sentences are used to convey the writer's uh, dismay or we can say worried or uh, sad feeling at the trend in many restaurants uh, not to use plates to serve food. So this is the point number 10, last point of the text. Jazakallahu khairan for watching this video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.